Hey guys, what's up? Sandu here. So many of you requested for me to make a review for the Gustard A22 DAC. Some around here, some on the soundnews.net. And I'm glad to report that it is finally ready. So I had a longer time with it, just to know it better. Uh, it had more than a week of burn-in time, so probably by listening to it in its best form possible. Before going deep with this review, I want to tell you that at first I wanted to contact them directly. But without an official website and any kind of contact form, that seemed like a mission impossible. So luckily Apos Audio came to the rescue and provided a review sample for us and here we are. In terms of build quality, A22 has all the bells and whistles a high quality DAC should have. So its case is made out of thick metal plates, beautifully crafted on a CNC machine. All the screws were moved on the back plate or under the unit so it would have a simple but clean look. It weighs a whopping 7.5 kilos, so already telling a story about the power supply and its filtering. Under the unit I was impressed to see some really solid aluminum feet padded with foam to absorb some nasty micro vibrations. From pictures it might look like the body is having some rough edges, but that is not the case so those are sanded and rounded on a very small scale. I like that it has flush buttons, so that volume control and the menu wheel on the right are cleverly designed too, and are looking almost invisible. The monochrome OLED screen is looking good, and it's quite bright too. Overall I'm dealing here with a very serious piece of kit, it's big, imposing, and it looks pretty good. As for controls and connectivity, on the front panel you'll find an on-off button, a big OLED screen in the middle, and on the far right there is a volume wheel in case you want to use it as a preamp and a button in the middle that will select the desired digital input. A long press on that button will enter its main menu where everything can be controlled via that joystick or via the remote control. On the back you can spot a wide variety of digital inputs as USB, I2S, coaxial, optical and AAC. The usual RCA and XLR outputs are present as well. It is a first seeing two voltage switches instead of a single one, so you can select between 115 and 220 volt input. Those switches are connected directly to a pair of custom 50 watt uh, transformers, so it makes sense. Please make sure that both are showing the correct AC voltage before powering the unit. As for the technology inside this unit, this is where it gets super interesting or at least for me it is. So I have already tested two AK44-99 designs by now and both of them sounded quite musical and super engaging. So listening to the A22 for more than a week now, I can safely say that AK44-99 designs have a very distinct sound to them, which I enjoy quite a lot. Gustar team went with two flagship AK44-99 DAC chips, wanting to squeeze the best this chip can offer. So I see that they used all those 8 channels, so 4 channels per chip, so obviously a very advanced and powerful IV conversion needed to be implemented, which they did. On the digital side they went with an Altera FPGA, infusing their own code for PLL shaping, clock management, DOAP modulation and so on. They also went with the most advanced femtosecond clocks from AquaSilicon and they used two of them. Now the interesting part is that Gustard completely separated the analog and digital power supplies and by doing that they lowered any kind of noise. They encapsulated both 50 watts custom transformers so that hum will not move to the rest of the electronics. The output stage uses only discrete components unlike its competition. I'm seeing four output transistors so clearly it's a fully balanced and a fully discrete class A design. It was quite unusual but interesting seeing the voltage output of both the XLR and RCA outputs. So A22 offers a really powerful 3 volts on RCA and a whopping 6 volts on XLR. So having such a powerful analog stage A22 should blown even my own reference DAC in a speaker setup working as a DAC and preamp combo. So I'm pretty sure that it will have something to say in the comparison that will follow. Ok everybody it's time to hit some eardrums. Ok guys, so in terms of overall sound performance, A22 is all about warm mid-range, about deep sounding bass, uh, it is also impressively extended in the top octave, more so than the former AK4499 designs that I have listened to. So another interesting aspect is that um, I was hearing that stage impressively wide, especially on, from left to right, 
Uh, there is quite a lot more room in there, even compared to my preference DAC, which is quite of amazing, if you ask me. Gustav infused some naturalness in this one, so I'm pretty sure that those uh, discrete electronics and that class A output stage left a very big stain on the overall sound signature. So it leans more towards an effortless and uh, musical approach, but it doesn't skimp a bit when it comes to resolution and uh, transparency. It sounds slightly warmer than any AKM designs, and considerably more musical and more evolving than any ESS Sabre design. So, uh, since I'm still uh, listening to the Audio GD R7 R2R DAC quite often, I was quite surprised to hear that uh, these two units are sharing similarities, they have uh, a lot in common. So, when it comes to Delta Sigma DACs, I feel that uh, A22 is the closest one I've tested that carries some of that R2R magic. It sounds musical, very imposing, incredibly natural, very extended in the frequency response, there is more air between the notes, and most importantly, it sounds like music playing in front of me, and not like any kind of uh, digital decoding. So the treble is also extended, yet free of any grain of, or harshness, and that is again very nice to have. I just finished a longer listening spree, and my ears are not ringing, but are craving for more, thanks to it, uh, laid-back presentation. So A22 is quite an easy rider and can be listened to a longer period of time. It will not tire you down with a fast transient response. And this is probably the only area where I could see some improvement. So uh, subjectively speaking, uh, I prefer matching the A22 with accurate and fast sounding amplifiers. So it will be a very good match in my opinion because you'll have all the warmth and uh, all the layering uh, that A22 can offer and all the details, speed and impact a good solid state amplifier could provide. Benchmark HPA4 worked extremely well with this unit, uh, Sparkos Labs Aries also, but the biggest surprise was hearing it in a speaker setup. So when I connected it to the Benchmark HPA4 and then to the KHS S125 power amp, A22 presented itself as quite open wide sounding, uh, with quite a precise pinpoint imaging. Uh, it was slightly smaller sounding compared to the Audio GD R7, but the sharpness and the leading edge of every note was clearly and more defined on the A22. So it sounded impressively clear and detailed, I was quite impressed by the top end. So usually AKM designs, uh, older ones, are not that impressive, uh, they didn't own me over with their smooth treble, with their roll-off top end. But newest AK4499 designs uh, solved all those issues and it's presenting detailed information in a very easy and natural manner. The biggest surprise for me was completely removing the benchmark HP4 from the acoustic chain and remaining only with the A22 that worked as a DAC and as a preamp combo, plus that S125 as the power amp. So there was a hit in the transparency, a little bit in the layering and speed, uh, control of the drivers was a little bit weaker, but everything else uh, remained simply intact. So I played the guess game with and without the HP4 in my acoustic chain, but sincerely the difference wasn't as big as I expected uh, compared to other costlier DAC units. So uh, A22 works that well, that good as a preamp only because it offers 6 volts of power on the XLR. Uh, usually it's 4 volts or maybe 4.5 on XLR. But A22 just outperformed any other DAC in a speaker based setup. So as a DAC and as a preamp combo it sounded just bigger bolder, more imposing, more layered and really effortless even compared to costlier units like uh, Matrix Audio Element X, uh, MyTech Brooklyn DAC Plus, Benchmark DAC Free and others. So the lesson is quite simple. The more voltage a DAC can offer and can supply, the less stressed will be the power amplifier that follows, preserving the best of the source and of the amplification. So in terms of background noise, I connected it back to the Benchmark HPA4 just because it works impressively well as a duck tester, because of that super low total harmonic distortion and complete lack of any noise. So I connected some uh, very sensitive IEMs and I pushed the volume much higher than my comfortable listening level and I started listening to some of my favorite tracks. So no matter how hard I pressed myself, uh, the good power filtering simply said its uh, final words. So background is simply as black as I've heard it on other top performing ducks. So I'm pleased to report that I experienced absolutely the same with my speaker setup. There isn't any kind of disturbing or any kind of noise. 
So even staying near the speakers, uh, there is an absolute silence between uh, passages. Noise is nowhere to be found and this is already a very good sign of what I should expect in terms of uh, detail, retrieval and transparency. So moving on to resolution and transparency, I started listening to Bay of Pigs by Destroyer, which by itself is really a masterpiece that needs to be heard to be believed. I strongly recommend you checking it out and if you do, please listen until the end. So the guitar plugs are sounding quite lifelike, uh, I'm just hearing how uh, hands are touching the, those guitar strings. Those cymbals are probably sounding as the cleanest ones that I've heard in any song. So I'm simply bombarded with so much micro details in such an effortless and such a transparent way. So the transparency and the pinpoint location of all the notes is absolutely perfect. And it somehow always wakes up my imagination while I'm doing that. So it is so pleasant spotting all that and doing all that so easily without stressing myself too much. So uh, A22 is quite a uh, detailed and uh, quite a uh, resolving sounding DAC and if resolution is your thing, uh, it can be easily compared with costlier units, with uh, Sabre designs, no problemo. So in terms of transient response, I went back and listened again to Destroyer, uh, Savage Knight at the Opera and even from the first seconds I started nodding my head, I started uh, tapping my right foot with a big and wide smile on my face. So the impact of those drums that they created was just impressive to feel and to hear. So the bass guitar in the background uh, sounded really punchy and really impactful. So the groovy nature of this song uh, was preserved and I quite enjoyed my time with it. One of my favorite local bands just released their newest album called Subradar. Uh, that is a really punchy sounding uh, recording. So the mastering is not really top notch as it was the case of their uh, past albums. But when it comes to pure heft, punch and impact in the chest, they know how to do it. And I'm not feeling losing any of that with A22. So in terms of pace, rhythm and timing, A22 was quite good but will probably not outperform the hardest slamming sources that I've heard. So generally speaking, A22 is more impressive in terms of uh, how much heft it has, how much uh, energy it is carrying with every note, but less so how agile and how speedy it can sound. So in terms of speed it is more than decent, uh, but there are still uh, faster sounding sources in the wild. So class A output stage always offered uh, just a harder and a heavier tone at the price of a slight decrease in agility and speed of delivery. So moving on to the sound stage, it's not hot news to anyone that out of all Delta Sigma ducks, uh, dual mono AKM design can't be beaten at their own game. And A22 is really not shy in showing that off uh, with a close to zero crosstalk, especially on those uh, XLR outputs. It is making even crowded hardcore sounding uh, very manageable and very easy to focus on, uh, on anything you want really. So from left to right space is somehow decompressed and really spread out and while listening to headphones this effect is so apparent that I almost want to enable some kind of uh, crossfit just to uh, have everything closer to me. So the stage size is up there with the nicer units, uh, it's still not on the same size with the best R2R units, but it follows the same footprints and offers the same kind of uh, spatial cues. After attaching some detailed sounding amplifiers to this unit, the depth was going really deep into the room, so uh, there is no stopping by uh, those notes on Hotel California, they just simply flew to the abyss. It will not stop you from dwelling uh, deep into your records, uh, just finding more layers of it, maybe more spatial cues, maybe uh, tiny amounts of air passing by. So A22 is without a doubt a good sounding DAC when it comes to simple things as uh, sound stage size on all three axes, depth information and spatial cues. Even upfront sounding headphones uh, started showing improvements, so those drivers can still uh, show more air with just a better audio source in the chain. As for the frequency response, I was really not very surprised to hear just a perfect rendering of the sub bass on this unit, so it went down in an instant. A22 always just uh, delivered the lowest notes with a bit more extra topping, so it went an extra mile and added a little bit more weight to it, so a bit more presence and a bit more oomph to it. So it is not really overdone in the sub bass, it is quite present down there, but uh, you can feel that presence only with uh, the right set of drivers. So as for 100 of Bucard audio that you see behind me, 
can unleash some of that uh, powerful low end, but only when a snappy amplifier and a snappy sounding DAC is connected to them. So I've heard them sloppy sounding, I've heard them mellow sounding, I've heard them bright sounding on the wrong setups, but with A22 as the front end, S400 delivered simply subterranean bass levels uh, that simply fill the room really nicely. So uh, mid bass is also extremely textured, it, it is also clean, uh, defined and can be easily felt on the most tracks. So once I'm listening to the A22 uh, bass guitars, organs, double bass uh, would always just stand out from the crowd and would just wink a few times uh, for my attention. So if you love bass, uh, A22 will be just right up your alley. How about the mid-range, you might ask? This is simply my favorite frequency range and um, uh, as it is the hardest one to play back naturally and close to the real thing. So A22 simply sounded uh, full of substance, quite meaty, uh, raw around the edges, but uh, nonetheless, naturalness is a big part of this unit. So if you are coming from a super linear sounding DAC, you might think that uh, mid-range level is somehow elevated or maybe uh, forward sounding, uh, making the music just sweeter and uh, less digital in a way, but that is not really the case here. So most of the cheaper digital to analog converters just don't know how a proper natural uh, mid-range should sound. So I always get a healthy dose of dopamine while I'm listening to any kind of acoustic music on this unit. So it simply becomes smooth, uh, liquid, uh, natural sounding, offering just strong textures and uh, just full-bodied voices. I was already expecting it to be awesome in the bass and mid-range and I thought that the treble response would be just passable or pretty good by how wrong I was. So there is definitely a healthy dose of crispness in there. Uh, so everything that has to do with uh, upper treble is unexpectedly clear and defined. So harshness, digitus or uh, teeth clenching moments were just simply missing in action. So I didn't spot any of that. 822 is again reminding me about that uh, art to art goodness, uh, having just everything at its place, uh, sounding detailed, but also natural and extended without a single trace of digital glare. So 822 is just scoring high points in terms of bass, mid-range and treble, it tames the unwanted glare and manages just to have a nice tonal balance across the board. I also compared it with my own Matrix Audio Element X, but since I don't want to make this video super long or boring, please check out my uh, detailed comparison in the written review that you can find below. As for the conclusion, I consider it having an amazing tonal balance, uh, offering just a warmer and a heavier tonality. Add that impressive holographic image, that open wide sound stage on all axes, a smoother presentation and you could basically listen to music all day long without any listening fatigue. It also got the title as the best preamp from all DAC plus preamp combos that I have tested around here. So if you are searching for a nice all-in-one solution for your speaker setup, uh, this just might be the best option for you. Now considering its build quality, those flagship chips, uh, its fully dual mono, all discrete and class A output stage, plus that powerful preamp at just 1,100 US dollars, I consider it really affordable and really a no-brainer for your speaker setup. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed my review. My full in-depth review is waiting on my website. In case you want to support this channel, please subscribe to it and thank you for doing that. As usual, listen to my music, be positive, and I'll see you soon. Cheers guys, bye bye.